Jesus, what a friend for sinners, Jesus, lover of my soul. Welcome to the Unknown Bible, the broadcast ministry of Bible Believers Baptist Church in Corpus Christi, Texas. Join us now for today's Bible study with our pastor, Bevan Zwelder. As you probably already know, Psalm 119 is one of my favorite passages in the Bible, and it is probably for a lot of people. It is for me specifically because 30 years ago, the Lord directed me to this passage of Scripture when my Bible opened to a place where I would begin to read. This is the first full chapter of the Bible uh, that I read when I began reading the Bible, and God did a miracle in my life. Uh, through the night that I read this chapter and God dealt with me about my life and turned my life around. Psalm 119 has 22 sections and each section is, def is defined by or identified by one of the 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. Each section has eight verses and so eight verses in 22 sections, there are 176 verses in Psalm 119. Now, all but three of these verses in this psalm contain a reference to the words of God. Uh, you might find the word law, testimonies, ways, precepts, statutes, commandments, judgments, words, ordinances. Now, each of those words that I just gave you um, mean something different, but they all refer to the words of God. There are three verses in all of these 176 verses that don't refer to the words of God. They refer to Jesus Christ, the Word of God. They are Psalm 119, verse 90, verse 122, and verse 132. Verse 90 deals with His creation. Verse 122 deals with His surety. And verse 132 deals with His name. So Psalm 119, uh, you're going to find just goes over and over and over and over again about benefits and great things in the words of God. Well, in Psalm 119, verses 9 through 16, the second section in this psalm, the one that is identified by the Hebrew letter Beth or Beth, has eight verses in it, and in this section, Psalm 119, verses 9 through 16, we find instructions on what to do with the Word of God. What to do with the Word of God. In this passage, Psalm 119, verses 9 through 16, we find these things. First of all, we are to heed the Word of God. Verse 9, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. In my memory, when I began to read Psalm 119 at midnight in September of 1986, when I hit this verse right here, it became absolutely clear to me that my life was not clean, and I was, I was beginning to see my life through the words of God, from God's perspective, and my life was anything but clean. And the Bible says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. And the thing that broke my heart is that I had, I had, not, be, I had not been heeding the word of God. Uh, we were in the Methodist church at the time, and I was teaching Sunday school, and I was regurgitating uh, sermons and lessons that were being taught by Dr. Ed Young at the Second Baptist Church in Houston, Texas. Uh, we were in uh, 
1 Corinthians, if I remember correctly. But I wasn't heeding what I was reading. I was simply taking what he said and then regurgitating that for the benefit of the class. But it was having no effect on my life. And the reason is, I really wasn't in the words of God. And certainly I wasn't heeding anything that they said. Now listen, if you will do what the Bible says, that's what James chapter 1 verse 22 says. It says, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. If you will do what the Bible says, you're going to find that your life will change. It will clean up. You see, Jesus Christ was speaking to his disciples in John chapter 15 when he was giving the, the demonstration there of the vine. And he says in verse 3, Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. In other words, in other words, when you read the Bible and, and you begin to do what it says, then Things that you were doing that God doesn't approve of. Things that you were doing that are sin. You know what happens? You begin to see those from a different perspective. From God's perspective, you say, well, I can't do that. And the Word cleans you up and, and, and draws you away from uh, that sin or that stuff that you do that God doesn't like. And by staying in the Word of God and by continuing to heed the Word of God, you keep your life clean. It's like brushing your teeth every day or several times a day. It's like showering and shaving. It's like grooming yourself. You know, uh, when you work and then you perspire or you go to the, the gym and you work out and you perspire and then you take a shower... You see, you have cleaned off uh, the sweat. You have cleaned off and debribed the skin. You, you've, you've cleansed yourself. And you do that regularly. Same way with the Word of God. You heed the Word of God. The second thing in this psalm is you seek God in the Word of God. Look at verse 10, Psalm 119. Verse 10, With my whole heart have I sought thee, O oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Now look what he says. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Now, when you search for the Lord with all your heart, you're going to find him. Uh, the Lord, <laughs> you know, the Lord uh, w will never keep himself from being known by somebody who really wants to know him. But the truth of the matter is, so few people really want to take, make the effort to get to know God or to seek God. When we're out visiting with people about the Lord uh, and we start talking to them about the words of God, you know, certainly we find some people that begin to take an interest. But I have yet to, well, very rarely, I think, find somebody who said, you know what, I am glad you came by. I'm, I've been sitting here pondering how in the world I'm going to find God. I need to know him. You just don't find that. People don't come down here to the church and knock the door down saying, you know what, I am looking for God and I can't find him. I remember on a, I think it was a Friday, I had um, was here at the office and I was working on a radio broadcast and the doorbell rang and a fella came to the door and I think he was here with his daughter and we began to sit down and talk. And you know what he said? I'm looking for God. I need God in my life. Now, there was, an, there was an occasion. I've got two friends of mine who went to see a preacher. And in both cases, they were looking for God. And I'll tell you, everybody that's looking for God will find him. The Bible says this in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13, Ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. So what, what should you do with the Word of God? You ought to seek God in the Word of God. Because if you that's the place to search. You're not going to find Him by worshiping a tree or by looking through a telescope or looking through a microscope. You're going to find God in the Word of God. Now, years ago, we had a Japanese exchange student that lived with us. And she was coming to church with us, but obviously... What we were saying, for one thing, because of the difference in language, was foreign to her. Her English was good, but, you know, when you're, when you're preaching, the concepts are so different. 
And uh, somebody in the church was really a, a high-pressure type soul winner and, and thought that she had actually led this girl to the Lord. She hadn't. Uh, she had encouraged her to find out about God. But in any, in any case, uh, I sat down with uh, our student, exchange student that lived with us, because she had you know, kind of demonstrated some interest in the things of God. And I said, listen, read your Bible. She had one. Read your Bible. Read it every day. And what I want you to do is I want you to simply pray every time you read and say, now, God, I don't know you, but I want you to reveal yourself to me. I want to know you. And then read the Bible and let him reveal himself to you. You know what she did? She searched every day for over two months and you know what God did? He revealed himself to her. Uh, we read that kind of thing in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 21. About the Lord revealing himself through the words of God. You see, Samuel found God through the words of God. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 21, The Lord appeared again in Shiloh. For the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh. Watch it by the word of the Lord. So she, she read every day and prayed every day for over two months. And God revealed himself to her. Now I came home from church one Sunday evening. She had been with us. And she was sitting at the kitchen table in tears. And I asked her what the problem was. And she said, I now see that I need to receive Jesus Christ as my Savior. And a lot more story to it than that. The point was, it was very simple for her to receive Jesus Christ as her Savior after she had searched the word for God. Because he had revealed himself to her. So that's what you need to do. We are to heed the word of God. We're to seek God in the word of God. And then in Psalm 119 verse 11, we are to memorize the word of God. The Bible says, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Now this is very much like verse 9, which says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? Well, so that's, a, take a fellow like me, I've come along here, my life is not clean. You get to the Word of God, and then God cleans you up. Now you know how to stay clean. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. You see, it keeps you away from sin. Now, that's memorizing the Word of God. Now, the instruction here is to hide the Word in your heart, not in your head. And I can't tell you all there is to know about how that's done, except to say that it, if it's in your head, it doesn't really change you. It just puffs you up with more knowledge. But if you get it down in your heart, it has an effect on you. It'll keep you from sin. You got to get it down inside of you where it can change you and change the way you think and what you do with your thoughts and what, and what kind of actions follow your thoughts. You see, when the Word of God is down in your heart, it'll talk to you and it will guide you along a path that is pleasing to God. I can't tell you how many times I've been praying over a particular matter or whatever, and a verse of Scripture will come to mind. Just the other, well, I say just the other day, this happens all the time now, but uh, I was kind of sorting out a decision with God, you've done that, trying to figure out the right thing to do, and I mean two verses of Scripture, boom, popped right into my head, and they were absolutely answers from the Lord with regard to the decision that I was trying to make, they were unmistakably, um, uh, not principles, but words from God that I needed in order to make the right decision. So you memorize the Word of God. Now you say, how do you do that? Well, it takes repetition. That's how you do it. You just have to go over it again and again and again. The other day I came across a passage of Scripture. I said, man, I really want to memorize that. So every day when I got up to do my Bible reading, I would go to that passage of Scripture and just go over it again every day, every day, every day, going over it. Well, I can quote it for you now, as I can other places in the Bible, and that's just repetition. So repetition is how you get it down in there. All right, here's another thing to do with the Word of God. Learn the word. Psalm 119, verse 12. Blessed art thou, O Lord. Watch it. Teach me thy statutes. All right. Well, if the Lord is your teacher, then you got to be the student. And the student is to learn. Well, the best person in the universe to teach you the Bible is the Lord. Turn back with me just briefly to Psalm 25. <clears throat> I want you to notice something here. Watch how many times David says to the Lord that he wants the Lord to teach him. Psalm 25, 
Look at verse 4. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Verse 5. Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Look at verse 8. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he will or will he teach sinners in the way. Verse 9. The meek will be, he guide in judgment. And the meek will he teach his way. Verse 12. In Psalm 25, what, a, what man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. <clears throat> so five times, five times, you see David telling the Lord, teach me, teach me, teach me, teach me, teach me. And the Lord will teach you. He will teach you the Bible when you study. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 says, study. That's what it says. It says, study. That's the first word in that verse. 2 Timothy 2.15, study. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman. So that's where most people fall out right there is because <laughs> you think, well, in order for the Lord to teach me, I got to work in the scripture. And they're like, I'm too, I don't want to do that. I don't have enough time. I'm too busy. I'm tired. You know, I'm not a good student. Whatever they come up with, you know all the excuses. He says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, the, the Lord is the best teacher in the universe. But the trouble, the trouble with most Christians today is they aren't reading or studying the words of God. That's the trouble with most Christians. Most people that profess Jesus Christ as their Savior, they don't study. They don't read. Now, listen, if they are studying, they're usually studying commentaries or books about the Bible. It's very popular now. I've got some friends of mine in a Southern Baptist church in another city. And I was talking to them the other day and they said, yeah, you know, what we're doing in church now is we're studying, I think, Max Licato's book on some uh, topic or whatever. And we'd studied a book before that, they said. And that was, that's, their, that's their material now. That's our Sunday school material. It's even their preaching material. I'm thinking, Wow. <laughs> Uh, they're not reading or studying the words of God. You know what they're doing? They're reading somebody else's study. They're reading somebody else's book, somebody else's commentary about the Bible. Now, the most, listen, the most you're going to get from a commentary or a book about the Bible is what someone else has to say about the Bible. That's the most you're going to get from it. A and what they have to say about the Bible may or may not be something that God taught them. Uh, more times than not, you know what you're reading? You're reading what someone learned from someone else rather than what God taught either one of them. That's right. They're just regurgitating with different words something that they learned from another person. And that's why you see these bad doctrines oftentimes perpetuated from generation to generation because the new authors are reading what the old authors read and neither one of them got anything from God. If you're going to learn that Bible, you're going, to have to, you're going to have to get down there in it, and you're going to have to ask God to teach you what that Bible says, and forget that you ever learned anything about it, and if He teaches you something that you've already heard from somebody else, then thank God you had a good teacher, okay? But at least what you'll get from God is the confirmation that what you learned from the person He used to teach you was right. You can't just go on what you've been told by somebody else. So learn the word. Here's the next thing. Declare. Declare the word. Psalm 119 verse 13. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. Declare the word. We need to preach the words of God. And others need to hear the words of God so that they can be saved. Oh, you know, we're so quick when we're talking about, you know, uh, sowing the seed of the Word of God and about people getting saved, we're so quick to say how easy it is. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 13. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We, we quote that verse, and we know it's true. But what does verse 14 say? Romans 10, 14 says, How then shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in Him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Somebody has to tell them. And that somebody is you. You need to preach the words of God. 
Now listen, listen very carefully. Certain people are going to receive the words of God better from you than from anyone else in the world. And you know why? Because you know them. You see, there are times, you, you can reflect right now, that the Lord has urged you to speak to them at some point. You can recall a time when you were at supper or you were at a, a function or you were at their home or they were at your home and you, you sensed the Spirit of God agitating you a little bit about telling them something about the Lord Jesus Christ and you withheld. For whatever reason, you disobeyed the Spirit of God and neglected to say anything at all. You know what I'm talking about. You remember the times. Listen, don't do that anymore. Because God is counting on you to sow the Word of God. You say, well, what if we get in a debate or an argument? Listen, God didn't say to debate them. He didn't say to argue with them. He just said, preach the Word. Declare the Word. You can do that. And then here's something else we're to do with the Word. Not only are we to heed it, Psalm 119, verse 9, and seek God in the Word, verse 10, and memorize the Word, verse 11, and learn the Word, verse 12, and declare the Word, verse 13. But we are to rejoice in the Word. Psalm 119, verse 14, I have rejoiced in, thy, in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. You know, it is so easy to get so tied up with making a living you know, that we miss out on the joy of the Lord contained in the Scripture. And the psalmist here in Psalm 119 is telling us that he found at least as much joy in the words of God as he did in all riches. Now, I'll tell you something. If you have never come to that place in your life where you rejoice in the word of the Lord more than in a paycheck or a windfall, then you hadn't found all that there is to find about what the Bible can do for you. If you have never come to that place in your life, you need to dig in deeper in the Word and discover its durable riches. Proverbs chapter 8 is all about the wisdom of God. And of course, the wisdom of God we know is contained in the words of God. And look what wisdom says in Proverbs chapter 8, verses 17 to 19. Watch it. She says, I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. <laughs> Oh, I'm telling you, if you hadn't found the joy of discovering something in God's words that tops the joy that a, a miner had in finding a vein of silver or a deposit of gold, then you hadn't been in that word long enough, deep enough, because there's joy in it. And I'll tell you something else. We need to meditate upon the word of God. Psalm 119, verse 15, I will meditate in thy precepts. And have respect unto thy ways. You know, when you finish your daily Bible reading, you ought to think all through the day about the things you've read. Mull them over in your heart. Mull them over in your head. Mull them over in your mind. First of all, they'll guide you. Because something they'll speak to you, right? When you're trying to make a decision or do something, you'll just hear that word of God giving you direction but also and this is what's really great about it you will see things going on around you and you'll be able to understand them better in other words when you watch the news it's opinionated okay uh, when you see something you form your own opinion about it or you'll go talk to friends and they will give you their opinions about what you're seeing or talking about or discussing listen when you read the Bible, and then meditate upon the words, you will see the things going on around you through what God said, rather than through your own opinion or the opinion of the media or the opinion of other people. And that's the beauty of part, about meditating upon the word. You're like, what do we do with, uh, with the country? What do we do with the uh, direction? What do we do with uh, the, the laws? What do we do with the... Uh, uh, 
you know, elections and things going on around us. How, how do we view those things? How do we view the immorality in our country? God will speak to you right out of the words of God. If you meditate, you'll see from God's perspective, you say, okay, I got it. And then finally this, in Psalm 119, verse 16, you need to delight in the word. He says, I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. You know what's going to happen to you if you heed the word, seek God in the word, memorize the word, learn the word, declare the word, rejoice in the word, meditate upon the word. <laughs> you're going to find the greatest satisfaction in reading and studying the words of God. Greater than anything you have ever experienced in your life. Because there's nothing in this world that can compare to the deep satisfaction of hearing from God personally in his words. I was talking to a fellow the other day, and he gave me a copy of yet another new English translation of the book of Romans. And when he gave it to me, he said, this and here talks like I talk. And I thought to myself, I don't want anything that talks like I talk. I want a Bible that talks like God talks. Why? Because I delight in the sound of his voice. Now, listen. If you don't delight in the words of God, perhaps your problem is the same problem that Adam had back in Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. You see, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 8, after Adam and Eve had sinned, the Bible says they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden. You see, he heard the voice of the Lord and hid himself because of his sin. Listen, that may be why you're not delighting in the words of God. You need to expose yourself and your sin to God's words, like the psalmist said, so that God's word becomes your education, your meditation, and your declaration. Oh, I'm telling you, the words of God are greater than anything else on this earth. Get into them. Know them and love them. Amen. You have been listening to The Unknown Bible, the radio ministry of Bible Believers Baptist Church in Corpus Christi, Texas. For information about our church, go to our church website at www.my3bc.com. That's my, the number three, bc.com. If you would like to contact us by telephone, our number is 361-241. 6100. Bible Believers Baptist Church is a Bible-believing church located at 1701 Rand Morgan Road. If you are not currently a member of a Bible-believing church and you are looking for a church with an uncompromising stand on the words of God, come visit with us this Sunday or Wednesday. We would love to see you. Hallelujah.